And I was going to find out who had been a dad the fewest number of years, but we'll save that. Oh, yeah. Isn't that oh, amazing? Marvin, Marvin, you win the prize. There's no prize, but you win it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes him 95? Is Marvin 95, 96? Yeah. Woo, 97? Wow. 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 <laughs> that deserves a clap, Marvin.
God, if there's anyone here this morning that doesn't know you, I pray today would be their decision of salvation and follow you for the rest of their life. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. The title of the message today is A Dad's Decision. A Dad's Decision. Reading that passage in the Old Testament, Joshua is trying to get them to come into the covenant with God. The Old Covenant, but nonetheless a covenant with Him. And it was a matter of choice. It was a family choice. It was an individual choice. And it still is today. You have that choice. You can choose to serve the God of your ancestors. You can choose to serve the God of the Amorites. That's what he was saying. You can serve the God, the God, the little G, in the past, the sun God, the moon God. You can serve the things in the present. He said the Amorite gods of where you live right now. If you're serving the things in the present, those things may be uh, money, success, whatever it is that, that, uh, Makes you tick, those kind of things are serving the gods of the present. But Joshua said, As for me and my house, we're going to serve the God of Israel, the Lord God, the one and only true God. If we read back and looking back in the, the first part of chapter 24, he was, uh, he got the elders. There you go, you got it up there. He got all the elders and leaders of all the tribes of Israel together. And basically he was just saying, here's the evidence. You know, we sing that song, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. Here's the evidence of God being faithful to you. Here's the evidence. In verse 2, Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel said. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. So Abraham's father didn't worship the God of Israel. You know when we say the God of, we start with Abraham, right? We don't start with Abraham's father. Abraham. Abraham made a decision. He made a dad decision to follow Christ. And just the promises of God after that. Wow. Now he would give him descendants. Like the sand. Of which Jesus Christ himself was a descendant. Amen? Amen. Abraham made that decision. And you can make that decision as well. Verse 3. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates. And led him throughout Canaan. And gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. And to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I signed the hill country of Sire to Esau. But Jacob and his family went to Egypt. Verse 5. Then I sent Moses and Aaron. And I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there. And I brought you out. Hallelujah. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea. Remember the Egyptians were coming after them. The Egyptians pursued with chariots and horsemen all the way to the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help. And he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Verse 8, I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you, and you took possession of their land. He just gave an account after account after account. Of what God has done for him. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, the son of Beor, to, be, to put a curse on him. But I wouldn't listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Then you came, you crossed the Jordan, and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you. So it was like, struggle after struggle after struggle. And here's God. Here's God again. Here's God again. Set them free, deliver them. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. He's like, I gave them all to your hand. Mm -hmm. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. Also the two Amorite kings. 
You did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I gave you a land on which you didn't even toil. And cities you didn't even build. And you live in them. You eat from their vineyards. And the olive groves that you didn't even plant. And they still want to worship the gods of their ancestors. <laughs> Joshua's like, are you crazy? Here's all these things that I have done for you. That God the Father has done for you. And you still choose to worship other gods? To worship false gods? He finally is like, listen, verse 14. Throw away those gods. Don't serve those gods. But if you want to, then that's your choice. And you will have to deal with the consequences of that choice. Dads, if you're not serving God, your family is suffering the consequences of that choice. Now I challenge you this morning. Now I challenge you. To follow Christ. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship. Throw them away. Throw away the pornography. Throw away the alcohol. Throw away the addictions. Yeah. Those things that don't matter in the end. Throw them away. Oh. Choose you this day who you will serve. But he says, as for me and my household. He didn't just say, as for my household, my wife and my kids can go to church. He didn't say, they can go to Sunday school. He said, as for me, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. The Israelites had a choice about which God they would serve. Joshua wasn't commanding them to serve God of Israel. He wasn't demanding them to serve the God of Israel. He said, look at the evidence. Yes. The evidence is all around you. Serve the God of Israel who created all these beautiful things. Who gave you all these things. Who gave you all those victories along the way. You're living in the land. That you didn't even have to toil. Eating the fruit of someone else's labor. Yeah. Well, serve the God that gave those things to you. Yeah. Dad, serve the God who gave you the child you yeah. have. The children that you have. So the Israelites had a choice to make. About which God they were serving. You had that same choice today. Acts 16. Acts 16 verse 31. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Amen. I was looking up some statistics. And just incredible. And if you've been a part of Promise Keepers, man, you know every year we hear these crazy numbers. There's about 138 million men in America. And the statistics said that over half of them make no profession of faith, but I dare say that probably 75 to 80 percent of them don't. I've never made a profession of faith in Christ Jesus. That's a lot of men. That's a lot of families. That's a lot of men in, in power in politics and businesses and local politics and governments that don't know Jesus. Can you imagine if each of those 138 million men even had one child? 138 million children? What if they had two? What if they had three kids? How many kids could be following the Lord if those men would rise up? I know you've heard these statistics. When a mother comes to Christ, her family joins her at church 17% of the time. 17% of the time. But when a father gets saved, 93% of the time the family comes with him. Amen. Wow. 
And I'm not saying that men are more godly than women. Right now, quite the opposite. I know for me, in my household, my wife out prays me. <laughs> my wife reads the scripture way more than me. My wife spends more time teaching my kids biblical principles than I do. But if I didn't come to church 17% of the time, is when my family would come. Dad's just to be there. Being there speaks a lot. Yes. Being around speaks a lot. Being an example of Christ to your kids and your family. I know they say actions speak louder than words. And you heard my youngest on the video say, my dad's encouraging me, my dad's nice, my dad loves me. <laughs> you don't have to say that you're encouraging for somebody to know that you're encouraging. You just do it. That's who you are. You're the example. That's the greatest decision you can make for your family is to follow Christ, to devote your family to the Lord, Amen. to demonstrate what it means to be godly. And listen, when you're not godly, you demonstrate humbleness. You say, look, I messed up. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have yelled at your mom like that. I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And there's another demonstration. There's another way, a teaching moment for you. I just thought it was amazing when I was reading that. that and I know I read that story. But the one thing that jumped out was that Abraham's father wasn't following the God of Israel. When God called Abraham out, Abraham made a decision, and that decision affected generations and generations until now, even. Yes. But that decision that Abraham made, then we've got in the lineage of Jesus, Matthew, I think, I believe it starts with Abraham. I believe it goes back to uh, Adam. But Matthew started with Abraham in the lineage of Jesus. That impressive. That's incredible. Can you imagine what it would do for our churches if even 25% of those 138 million men said yes to God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine what it would do for our schools? If the dads would stand up and be the men God called them to be. Can you imagine what it would do for our communities if godly men were making the decisions? What if instead of 80% of our High school kids not knowing Jesus. What if 80% of them knew Jesus and served him? Yeah. What would it do for our schools to have that many more Bible toting, scripture quoting, people of love and Christians walking the hallways? Imagine what it would do for your family if you made that decision today. To follow Christ. To do what he says to do. To read the Bible. To read the Bible to your kids. Hey, if your kids are 50 years old, it's not too late. You pick up the phone. You can send them text messages. They love that. Send them a scripture every day. Until they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just trying to share the love of Jesus with you. Because I messed up. I didn't do it when you were young. Whatever. You can still do it. Yeah. Yes. Last thing I want to share with you. 
And I didn't put it up there, but everybody knows about the armor of God, right? Yeah. Season 16. Says to put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, to have the shield of faith, to have the belt of truth, to have your feet shod with the gospel of peace, to have the sword of the Spirit. Of those things, all of those things are about defending my body. The only thing to defend my family is the sword of the Spirit. Do you know what's in here? When the enemy comes in my mind, I've got the helmet of salvation. I can defend with the help of God. But when the enemy comes in my family, what good is my helmet of salvation on my daughter? What good is my breastplate of righteousness on my sons when they're scrolling the internet and something pops up? What good is my shield of faith for them if they're not behind me, if I'm not leading them? If I'm not the one out in front, Amen. if I don't have my sword ready for battle, what good is my armor? Right. That's be, be the father that God has called you to be. Get in his word. Understand where the answers are found where the help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. Yes. Now I'm not saying I'm perfect. I guarantee you I'm far from it. But I try. I try. Yes. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because you're here today. <laughs> but get your family in church. No church is not the answer. God is the answer. Yes. And I know you can encounter God anywhere and everywhere. But we need to know. And if you're not reading it, then it needs to be read to you. And that happens in Sunday school. Yeah. There were some other crazy statistics if you're not coming to Sunday school. Sunday school statistics are outrageous. It's like, you know what I mean? 6% of young adults under the age of 30 come to Sunday school. It's like, I'm like, what? Where is your mind at? <laughs> what are you thinking? There's an opportunity to bring your kids, let them get fed the Word of God, and you can get fed the Word of God at the same time, and you're all growing together. Yeah. And you choose to sleep another hour? Yeah. And that's just an example. That's one example. But I was, can't remember the numbers, the, the percentage of Families that do come to Sunday school and the percentage of the kids that stay in the church when they're grown far exceeds the ones that just come to church. Wow. You come to Sunday school and to church. It, it's exponential. And then you throw in a midweek service in there. It just expounds. I mean, it's just it's incredible. If you only come to church, the percentage is really low. Yeah. Are your kids staying in church the rest of the life? If you come to church, Sunday school, church, and a little week service, it was like 80 percent of the kids would stay in church. That doesn't mean they're gonna be there all the time. They can. You know, you're gonna go through your twenties, teens and twenties, try to figure things out on your own. But what does the Bible say? Train up a child in the way he should be. And when he is old, he won't depart from it. When he's old, he won't depart from you. I hope this morning that you got something out of the message. I know it's it was short and sweet. Awesome. But it's just something that I know it's cliche to have a Father's Day message on Father's Day, but there's just something about it. There's just something about the Father. And it's the way God created it. He said, here is here is my example. Here it is the way I want it to be done. And when we get out of that, it messes things up. Thank you.
But when the dad is the head of the household, not just in his own mind, <laughs> but when his wife recognizes him as the head of the household, when his kids recognize him as the head of the household, not so he can be boastful and proud and say, look at me. I'm doing this thing. I've got my family. I'm protecting them. No. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dads, you're greater when you are weak. <laughs> Where the Spirit of the Lord can be your strength.
but just to see his faith through it all. And I know he's broken and shattered. And I know his wife, Holly. You know, you just go through the motions at the graveside and the funeral. You really probably don't even really know what's going on. You're just there. But Holly got up. She's a worshiper. She got up at her daughter's funeral and sang, It is well with my soul.
there anyone here this morning who wants to make the decision to follow Christ for the first time? Just lift your hand up. Just raise your hand. You can put it back down quickly. Thank you. Is there anybody who wants to rededicate and say, I knew Jesus. I followed him when I was younger, but I haven't followed him in a long time. If that's you, raise your hand. If you want to recommit your life. It's like Joshua standing before the Israelites and saying, look, here it is. Here's the evidence. Here's the goodness of God. Now you make the choice. Father, thank you this morning for those that are making choices today. For those that are making the choice right now to surrender their life, to surrender their will, to surrender their emotions, To give it all to you, Father. God, replace the things that are separating them from you. Replace them with godly things, godly friends, godly co-workers that are going to lift them up and not tear them down. Godly employers, Father. We need more godly employers. Jesus' name. 